How's it going, truth seekers, skeptics, and anyone else who may be listening? This is Designated as and dedicated to bring the very best of the unexplained. I'm back again with an odd, unexplained, and hair-raising account of the unnatural. Before I start, though, if you could please hit that like and subscribe button and share this post on social media or with any like-minded individuals, it sure would help a lot, and I'd definitely appreciate it. Thank you all. All right, let's get going. Are you familiar with the so-called X-Files? I believe they have to do with unexplained phenomena. When convention and science offer us no answers, might we not finally turn to the fantastic as a plausibility? Logically, I would have to say no. How's everyone doing today? I just wanted to wish all my followers that celebrate Christmas a Merry Christmas. And I hope you're making the best out of this situation, staying healthy, staying safe. To anyone else, happy holidays. It's the thought that counts. Today I have two skinwalker encounters directly from Navajos, which I prefer. Skinwalkers kind of blew up and they started appearing everywhere and encounters were coming from, in my opinion, from places that just made no sense. Now, it's not my place to say anyone's a liar unless I know 100%, but I just see no reason a skinwalker would really bother a white person. They're, they're supposedly shamans that started practicing black magic and doing bad shit. It, it, it just, it holds a lot more weight and credibility and maybe it's just a bias, but it's coming directly from a Native American and to me, that's just far more credible than some random white person saying, oh, I saw a skinwalker. H- how would you even know? But uh, regardless, let's get into it. I'm a Navajo and a Christian, but I do believe in the devil. And I believe that skinwalkers are demons. I grew up in the rural community Crystal, New Mexico. It's full of trees, mountains, and hills. The houses are scattered. The nights are pitch black at times, especially when the moon is low. My family is very humble, thankful to God for our success. We help and appreciate others as all people should be treated. Sometimes we are tested. One night, I had a friend sleep over. We were in my room talking and hanging out. It was around 11 p.m. or so. Nice summer night, so my window was wide open, and it was very dark outside. My dad was in the living room watching TV. As usual, he fell asleep on the couch. My mom had already gone to bed. My friend and I were talking, when all of a sudden, we heard the screen door open and slam shut. We thought it was my dad. While that happened, My mom claimed she heard footsteps going through her room towards the restroom. She thought it was my dad, but then she soon realized that she was unable to move, as if she were paralyzed. Still in my room with my friend, we soon heard the screen door open and slam again. The slam woke my dad, and he came to my bedroom to check on us. He wanted to see if we were still there and not into mischief. My mom told us the next morning about what she heard and how she could not move. She also told us that the second time the door slammed, she then heard horse hooks run by her bedroom window. A few nights later, I was in bed asleep. I woke because something outside my open window was making noise, like a loud stomping sound. I was too scared to get up and close the window. I stayed still and continued to listen. Then, I heard something running away. I slowly got up and walked over to the window. As I pulled it shut, a large, dark shadow formed outside. I ran back to my bed and pulled the covers over my head. The next morning, my dad told me that there was a skinwalker visiting at night. This was the first time he ever mentioned a skinwalker to me. He told me not to fear it. Our faith would protect us. I don't know what was on the skinwalker's agenda, but what I do know is that my family was stronger than it. Our faith is strong, and we know our savior will provide protection for our family. Every year, we hike up the mountain to a high point, and we pray for our community's protection from evil. Initial JK. The next encounter goes like this. 
My family never mentioned skinwalkers or witches to me, so I knew nothing about them. My grandpa died a few years ago, so my parents sent me to live with my grandma to help her around her ranch on the reservation. I brought my cat along. Well, just after two weeks of living there, my cat went missing. I figured that he would come back, but he never did. I called him and looked for him, but nothing. I went to go put some hay behind the barn for the horses when I saw my orange cat's remains. I thought maybe something attacked him, like a coyote, so I picked it up and I saw that there were no bones, just skin. On the outside of his fur, there was red and yellow, even white paint on the outside of him. I couldn't figure out what it was. I buried him behind a hill with a little stone with his name carved on it. I was heartbroken. My grandma said she would get me a new cat, but I didn't want a new cat. Soon enough, I kept hearing meows outside the Hogan and scratches at the door. My grandma doesn't have any other cats. I would open the door and find nothing. Then, one day, I went to go check on my cat's grave and dig it up to make sure he was still there. He was gone, but his bones were there. I couldn't believe it. Why were the bones there? I thought I buried his skin. Ever since I have lived there, I have experienced some of the strangest things in my life. I don't want to go back. I can't even share what kind of crazy things happened to me, because from there, I drew the line. I was confused and scared about these people, but at the same time, I knew I was one of these people. I have a greater respect for the Navajo people, which is why I don't think getting involved with skinwalkers is a good idea. Just don't mess with them, and they won't mess with you. JJ. Those are the two encounters, both from the Navajo Reservation, and uh, I'm no expert, but if I'm not mistaken, Navajos are the origin of the Skinwalker legend, or at least one of the early, early tribes that, you know, the legend was circulating around. I know they appear in Algonquin myth and legend too, but I'm just not sure about the time periods, who came first and such. But, you know, it's interesting that, that a Navajo said his Christian faith protected them from the Skinwalker, because not even just Skinwalkers, but other cryptids that you uh, hear encounters and reports of. People say, I, I could only think to pray to God in that situation. And when I open my eyes, the creature, the demon, the UFO, whatever, was gone. So while I'm not the biggest fan of the Jesus will save you and protect you, and they're all different kinds of demons, I, as a researcher, still have to take into account Oh, just, just to make a note, I'm Jewish. I have no problem with Christianity at all. It's just I can't pray to Jesus because that's just not what I do. So, as I was saying, it's apparent to me as a researcher, and it would be bad research if I didn't take into account the number of times, it, and it's a lot, that people say I, I prayed to God, and whatever it was went away. So, in my mind, in my point of view, my non-Christian mind, it seems more like faith. It's faith that repels these things as opposed to specifically Jesus. But as I said, I have no problem with Christianity and essentially what I'm saying is I think if you pray to the God of, of your belief in a moment of crisis such as this, it, the faith seems to affect these paranormal supernatural experiences in some way. Whether it's the sheer energy you're outputting, whether it's God really exists and comes and saves your ass, who knows. But um, definite, definitely something interesting and something very real. Like I said, even though it does annoy me when I hear people say, oh, this and this is a demon, it has to be demons, but whatever, I'm just rambling now. And as for the second encounter, I believe this, this man went to live with his grandma, as he said, on the Navajo Reservation. And when I 
first read the story, it wasn't apparent to me that he didn't know much about the culture. I just thought he didn't know much about skinwalkers, but it's, it's apparent to me that he just was raised off the reservation. Probably just thought, like most people think, they're old legends made up by native tribes to keep children in after dark, because let's be honest, if you're living outdoors, there's definite dangers and things that could easily harm and kill a child, especially at night. So, I mean, it's a very logical conclusion to come to. It was just a legend I used to teach. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you have an account or personal encounter of anything odd and unexplained, whether it be ghostly visitors, a sinister stranger, cryptid or unknown entity encounters, demonic or angelic visitation, extraterrestrial contact, or anything else unexplained, feel free to contact me with your account by sending an email to designatedxshow at gmail.com. See you in the next one. Peace.